Canaanite religion. At the time of the conquest under Joshua, Canaan was a land of city-states. Each king owned the land and distributed it as he wished. It was a feudal system, with each king independent and fighting each other. These once influential kingdoms were considerably decadent when Joshua began his campaign. The challenge was that each stronghold had to be conquered as a separate nation. However, the separate kingdoms united for retaliation against Israel, the five Amorite kings for example. Archaeology has revealed a culture of fine arts and elaborate architecture. Pottery was renowned and a favorable geographical position encouraged trade with Egypt, northern Mesopotamia and Cyprus. The land was much coveted by the superpowers, either as an advance base for future expansion or as a base of resistance to counter or discourage any idea of invasion. At the time of the conquest, 1400-1200 BC, Egypt was protecting Canaan, but was weak. The Telephone El Amarna Letters Clay tablets, record correspondence between Canaanite kings and Egypt regarding the threat of invasion. The invaders have been possibly identified as the Hebrew people. The ethical problem raised by the genocide commanded by God can be answered by taking a closer look at the Canaanite religion. Canaanite religion. Through archaeology, the second millennium BC Canaanite religious system has become notorious for its depravity. The Phoenician and Canaanite religions were almost identical. It was essentially a nature religion, in which the gods and goddesses were closely associated with the natural cycle of the seasons. The religion was a crude and debased form of ritual polytheism, the sensuous fertility cult, involving worship of a particularly lewd and orgiastic kind. It proved to be more influential than any other nature religion in the Near East, ensnaring the nation of Israel. Sacrifices were offered to the gods for two purposes. The first was to appease the gods' wrath, an act of propitiation. The second was to to strengthen the god, to enable him to bless those who worshipped him. Prized gifts resulted in greater blessing from the god, particularly when firstborn male children were sacrificed. There were many gods, these were the main ones, El with his consort Asherah, El's son Baal with his consort Anat. Baal was in conquest with Mo, the god of misfortune. The most important items in a Canaanite sanctuary were the altar, the stone pillar, male deity, and the wooden pole, female deity. These sanctuaries were on the tops of hills, the high places, which are Often mentioned in Old Testament Canaanite religion appears also to have incorporated aspects of religion from the surrounding nations into its own worship, including Teshub Hepa, the Hurrian storm, God and consort, the Oriris, Isis cult from Egypt, Shamash the sun god, Ishtar, the bloodthirsty goddess of love and war, and Tammuz, the fertility god from Mesopotamia. The male deities, El. El was the original leader of the pantheon. El was a common name for a god and was used for any divine being, including the God of Israel, Genesis chapter 16 verses 13, 21, 33, 31 to 13, 35 to 7. El was a rather shadowy figure who was worshipped as father of man and the father of years. He was the creator of creators and dwell that the source of the two deeps. His instructions were conveyed by messengers to add to his remoteness. His consort was Asherah, wife, the counselor of the gods, and known to the Israelites as Asherah. Baal, the principal and more active deity was the fertility deity Baal, meaning, master, owner, lord, or husband, sometimes known as Hadu or Hadad, the god of rain and storm. Baal succeeded El as the head of the Canaanite gods. He lived in the lofty mountainous regions of the remote northern heavens. Statuettes portray him as the storm deity, wearing a short skirt and horned helmet, symbolizing his strength and fertility, standing with a mace in his upraised hand and a thunderbolt at his left side.
His titles included Zabul, Lord of the Earth, and Elian, the one who prevails. The name, Baal, normally described a local deity, together with a local name, for example, Baal of Peor, Numbers chapter 25 verse 3, or Baal Hermon, Judges chapter 3 verse 3. These were seen as gods of a locality, controlling the fertility of agriculture, beasts and mankind in that limited geographical area. Worship was needed to secure their favor, especially in a dry area like Palestine, with little rainfall and few springs. Baal also described the great nature god, sometimes referred to in plural, first. Kings chapter 18 verse 18. It was most significant that Elijah began his ministry of conflict with the prophets of Baal by declaring that it would not rain, first Kings 17, a direct challenge against Baal, the God of rain. The Baal in a knot cycle described Baal's struggle with Mo, the deity of death, drought, barrenness, and misfortune, who challenged the kingship of Baal. At the height of the summer drought, when the land was dying and Pa, RCHED, Baal had to yield to Mo and descend to the underworld realm and was slain. Anat, the consort of Baal, revenged herself by killing Mo, after which she planted his body in the ground. Baal, then recovered and a period of prosperity followed, followed once more by the resurgence of Mo. This cycle reflected the alternation of the seasons in the agricultural year. This myth was acted out, each year, with accompanying magic. The recovery of Baal and marriage to Anat was the most important event of the year. The worship involved grossly sensuous rites accompanying the sacred marriage in which ritual prostitution of both sexes was a prominent feature. The female deities. It is difficult to distinguish between the different goddesses. There appear to be three goddesses, being forms of the great goddess of love, motherhood and war. Astarte. The names Astarte and Ashtoreth, plural Ashtaroth, meaning queen of heaven, appear to be used in the OT as a generic term for female fertility. Deities. 1 Samuel 7-3. Worship of these female deities was widespread over the ancient world up to Roman times, when they were known as Aphrodite, Greek, or Venus, Roman. Asherah. Asherah was the consort of El, 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 19. Various cult objects and symbols were associated with the worship of Asherah, in which she was thought to reside. The most prominent appears to have been some object of wood such as the image of the goddess herself, which was erected beside the altars of incense and cone pillars of the Canaanite shrines. It was held in abhorrence by the faithful Israelites who cut them down and burned them. In the King James Version the Hebrew name, Asherah, is rendered, grove, relating the cult object to the place it was worshipped. Anod or Anath, the character of Anod shows the depraved nature of Canaanite religion. She was the sister and spouse of Baal. Anod was the goddess of love, fertility, and war. Both Anod and Astarte were described as the great goddesses who conceive but do not bear. Jeremiah's hometown of Anathoth contains the name Anat. Anat lamented over Baal's descent to the underworld and took vengeance on Mo. This vengeance is described in terms appropriate to the harvesting, winnowing, roasting, grinding and sowing of corn. She make the autumn and winter seasons yield their fruits. Cult objects such as lilies representing sex appeal, and serpents, symbolic of fertility, were associated with the sensuous worship of Anat. Prostitution with extremely perverted sexual acts was a central part of the religious life. In contrast to Egyptian goddesses who were always clothed, Canaanite figurines were naked with exaggerated sexual organs. Vast number of these fertility figurines have been discovered in Archaeological excavations. Canaanite religion, a stumbling block for the Israelites. It is easy to see how tempting it would be for the Israelites, used to a nomadic desert existence, only used to flocks and herds, to adopt the god and goddesses of the land, 
especially as the fertility and fruitfulness of the land appeared to depend on them. As the people settled to a more agricultural lifestyle, they felt the need to call on Baal to ensure that the rains would fall. It is also likely that the nomadic Israelites felt inferior to the well-developed society of the Canaanites. They continued to worship Yahweh, who was considered only as one of many gods, the God of Israel. The sordid and debased nature of Canaanite religion stood in marked contrast to the high ethical ideals of Israel. The absolute lack of moral character in the Canaanite deities made such corrupt practices as ritual prostitution, child sacrifice and licentious worship the normal expressions of religious devotion and fervor. There could be no compromise between the morality of the God of Israel and the debased sensuality of Canaanite religion. Therefore God commanded the Israelites to utterly wipe out the inhabitants of the land. The failure of the Israelites to do this caused great problems for the next 1,000 years as they intermarried with the Canaanites and attempted to worship both the Baals and Yahweh, other gods, Molech or Moloch. Molech was a deity associated with Ammon, 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 7, where it is described as the abomination of the Ammonites. Worship of Molech involved child sacrifice, described as making a son or daughter pass through fire as an offering to Molech, 2 Kings chapter 23 verse 10, also Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 31, 19 to 5. Even kings of Judah were involved in this, Solomon built a high place for Molech east of Jerusalem, probably on the Mount of Olives, 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 7. Others like Ahaz, 2 Chronicles 28-3, and Manasseh, 2 Kings chapter 21 verse 6, 2 Chronicles 33-6, were condemned for sacrificing their sons. Worship of Molech took place at places known as a topith, meaning fire pit, in Syriac. One topith was in the valley of the son of Hinnom, SW of Jerusalem, 2 Kings chapter 23 verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 35. Josiah was commended for destroying the high plaque. S of Molech during his reforms. 2 Kings chapter 23 verses 10, 13. Chamosh. Chamosh was the god of the Moabites. 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 7. Where it is described as the abomination of the Moabites. The Moabites were called the people of Chamosh. Numbers chapter 21 verse 29, Jeremiah chapter 48 verse 46. Worship of this God also involved child sacrifice. 2 Kings chapter 3 verse 27. Solomon erected a high place for Chamosh in Jerusalem. 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 7. Which was finally destroyed by Josiah. 2 Kings chapter 23 verse 13. Dagon. Dagon was the god of the Philistines. Some people suggest that it was a sea god, half man and half fish. Otherwise it was a fertility god, the Philistine version of the Baals. The Philistines claimed that Dagon had given Samson into their hands, Judges chapter 16 verse 23, and rejoiced at the temple to Dagon in Gaza. When the Philistines capture the Ark of the Covenant from the Israelites, they placed it in the temple to Dagon in Ashdod, 1 Samuel 5-2. The presence of the Ark caused trouble in Ashdod, including the destruction of the image of Dagon, 1 Samuel 5, 3-5. Saul's head and armor were captured by the Philistines and placed in the temple to Dagon, before they were recaptured by the Israelites, 1 Chronicles 10-10. The High Places. High places are mentioned over 100 times in the Old Testament. The Hebrew word is, Bama, which is used in two different ways in the Old Testament. Firstly, the word is used about 20 times, normally in the plural form, Bamat, simply to describe a physical height, like a mountain or hill. In this context it carries the overtones of dominance and control, particularly in warfare. 
Battles took place on hill slopes, so possession of the heights therefore gave lordship over the land. Numbers 21-28. In his lament for Jonathan, David declares, Your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon your high places, and Jonathan lies slain upon your high places, 2 Samuel 1 19, 25. The prophets asserted that God rides or walks on the heights, Amos chapter 4 verse 13, Micah chapter 1 verse 3. God had set Israel on top of the heights of the land, Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 13, Isaiah chapter 58 verse 14. David declared that God had set him secure on the heights. 2 Samuel 22:34, Psalms 18:33. The prophet Habakkuk said that God made him tread upon the heights. Habakkuk 3:19. The most important use in the Old Testament is to describe the shrines that were often built on the tops of these hills or mountains. Associating heights with lordship may account for their choice of location of shrines. In the thinking of the ancient world each god had their holy mountain, from where they controlled the local area. Some bamats contain a round or flat platform, but the term seems more naturally taken as embracing the whole cult area including altar, stones and houses. Shrines on heights were typical of the early period, Numbers chapter 22 verse 41, 1 Samuel 9, whereas later they are to be found in towns, 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 9, or in one instance in a valley, Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 31. By the end of the monarchy period the term was applied to many types of local shrines, including a small gate shrine, royal centers to foreign gods, large public shrines and local rustic shrines, 2 Kings 23. A reconstruction of a high place found in Arad is displayed in the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. God commanded through Moses that there was to be only one place that the Lord will choose to be worshipped, and that all other places of worship were to be destroyed, Deuteronomy chapter 12 verses 2 to 7. However, it appears that Israel took over Canaanite shrines after the conquest. During the early years of the monarchy, even loyal worshippers of God used the high places, Bamat. Samuel offered sacrifices at a high place in the land of Zuf, where he anointed Saul to be king, 1 Samuel 9. After this, Saul met with a group of prophets coming down from a high place led by lute, fife and drum, 1 Samuel 10-5. By the time of Solomon, the high place at Gibeon had risen to unique status and was known as the Great High Place. The tabernacle and altar of bronze which Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur had made was kept there and it was at Gibeon that God challenged Solomon in a dream about the character of his reign, 1 Kings 3. 2 Chronicles 1. Following the division of the kingdom in 922 BC the Bamat posed a new threat to the purity of Israel's faith. In the northern kingdom Jeroboam built houses of high places as part of his campaign to distract his subjects' attention away from Jerusalem, 1 Kings chapter 12 verses 25-33. It is through these high places that Jeroboam made Israel to Essen. These high places, Bamat, were nominally dedicated to God, but also included many Canaanite features, such as images, standing stones, and Asherah poles, as well as being where sacred prostitution and other fertility rites were practiced. The author of the Book of Kings blames the existence and building of high places as a major cause of the collapse and exile of the northern kingdom of Israel, saying that, the people of Israel secretly did things that were not right Aga, inst the Lord their God. They built for themselves high places at all their towns, from watchtower to fortified city. They set up for themselves pillars and sacred poles on every high hill and under every green tree. There they made offerings on all the high places, as the nations did whom the Lord carried away before them. They did wicked things, provoking the Lord to anger. They served idols, of which the Lord had said to them, You shall not do this.
2 Kings chapter 17 verses 9 to 12. In the southern kingdom the situation was not much better. The high places, Bamat, were revived under Rehoboam. 1 Kings chapter 14 verse 23. Attempts to suppress idolatry by Asa and Jehoshaphat had no lasting results, as the high places were not removed. 1 Kings chapter 15 verse 14, 22 43. Hezekiah conducted a more thorough reformation, including removing the high places, 2 Kings chapter 18 verses 1 to 8. However his wicked son Manasseh who, did more evil than all the kings that were before him, again rebuilt the high places that his father had destroyed, 2 Kings chapter 21 verse 3. Under Josiah a far-reaching purge was undertaken, when the high places were broken down, 2 Kings 23, but his successors were not of his caliber and the shrines were again reviving when the Babylonian army put an end to the Judean kingdom. There appears that there was a level of embarrassment felt at the use of these shrines by Israel's heroes. The Talmud and the rabbis maintained that the ban was periodically lifted. It seems more likely that Samuel, Saul and Solomon simply wished to claim these shrines for God without realizing the syncretistic dangers, which had been plain to Moses and all too accurately vindicated by history.